everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have been sitting at my desk for the last hour and a half trying to edit down the video from getting behind on doing the March Doodle a Day. And I've decided that there's just too much footage because I got too far behind to show you how I did each one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a flip through and maybe I will show you how I did the belly band for it since I promised I would. Most of the footage of me making the medallion here was I was drawing off over here in the corner and you really couldn't see anything I was doing. <laughs> so I decided that that was a bust and I'm not going to try to recreate it or just I'm going to show you what I've done over the last month, and that'll be it. So, let me take... This is the, the belly band. And let me explain how I made it. I found a doodle on... I think it was on Pinterest. Duh. And I made the first one, which is the outer part right here, and colored it in and did everything to it, and didn't like it. And I didn't want to waste it, so what I did was I did a second one and put more shading into it and put little tiny circles around it and decided I liked it better than this one's inside. So I fussy cut the outside ring of the second one I did and glued it on top of this one. Then I took one of those, I don't know what they call these enamel pearls or um, enamel dots and stuck it in the middle because I thought that would give it a little more focus. This is what this is the fussy cut that I did where I cut the this one out. That is this. This was the outside ring that I did for it and I didn't like it but I hated to waste it because I put a lot of time and effort into it so I thought oh what the heck it'll make a nice backside to the um, belly band. I also, I'll wait for the camera to focus, also did this so that I would know what it is when I put it on the bookshelf, either this way or flat. The belly band is black cardstock, just wrapped around, and then I did the creases like I did in past videos with the uh, stylist and the board and made creases on it, scored it, so that it would be the right side to slide this in and out of. All right, let me back you out because there's a lot to see here. All right, so any of you or those of you who have been following know that I intended to do a doodle a day, and I pretty much did, but I just didn't get them in the glued in here quick enough, and I didn't get the video um, edited fast enough because I was still working on flag book stuff, and I still have two videos of those to finish may or may not. Um, so that's why this didn't get completely fin uh, completely videoed and put out there. So uh, let me go back down a little bit. So these are all individual ones where I did the doodle. I found them in um, a Zentangle book. I found them on Pinterest. And I just did individual patterns. I didn't do like a whole picture. I just did individual patterns because basically that's what interests me the most. I don't think I'm very... Um, I, I don't put things together very well in patterns for um, doodles. I'm still trying to find my way through that, but I love doing the individual patterns. So these are all individual patterns. Each one has... Well, most of them have the name of the pattern and the person who created the pattern. Uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, let's go in a little closer. Here we go. These are just squares and circles, kind of one on top of the other, and then, you know, concentric squares and circles inside them. This one was divided up into, I think I did half inch, half inch boxes. And then you just start from one end of the box and draw your lines diagonally through it. And that's all there is to that. These really are not that hard. This one, 
this one was a little harder to do because I trying to know where to put the open space here was a little harder for me and you can see that I struggled it a little bit through some of them some of them I did better than others then to distract from that what I did was I took the uh, micron pen and drew all these little lines through here and no I they're not like I didn't go straight through like that I just did line 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 and then line 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 like that in sections and it makes it look like it was all done in one piece this is called wire wrap this one is jelly roll I don't know who the creator is the artist is but these are super duper simple circles that look like snail shells draw little lines all going the same direction take a black marker and fill in the open space really not that hard people think that doodling is hard it really isn't this is just squares the same way I did divided up this one, I divided this. And then you only draw lines in every other square. And then on the squares you didn't draw the lines in, you just blacken it in to where you leave a little white box in there. Like I said, I don't do anything that's too complicated because I have a very short attention span. This one, Helix Variation. I love doing this one. I like doing lines and repetitive things, as you can tell from all of these. I like doing it. It looks reminds me of a pearl necklace. I really enjoy doing this one. Um, this one is called Rolo Chain. Takes a little more concentration to do this one because you've got to make sure you leave enough room when you do the chain that you leave enough room in these three that are stacked, these three ovals, so that it makes it look like the chain is going in here and then you have another part of the chain that's also sharing that same space. So you have to be very careful and pay attention and make sure you do your portions, proportions, sorry, your proportions correctly so that it makes it look like these things are holding a chain together. This one, groovy, super simple to make. Just put a bunch of wavy lines and then draw more wavy lines. Shading and you're done. This one right here is one of my favorites. I love doing this one. This is harder, takes longer. And the only reason it's harder is because you have to pay attention to where you put these little boxes. And then you have to draw little tiny boxes inside, little tiny boxes inside, tiny boxes. And it takes a while to do this. But it is simple. It just takes time. Uh, did there's any shading in this one? Nope, there's no shading in this one. This one's called Surf's Up, and I like drawing cylindrical-looking rods or sticks, what do you want to call them? And then you just do wavy lines, and then you do wavy lines inside your wavy lines and make sure that every other one is going the opposite direction. Shading is really important for this one because it makes it look like it's more rounded. These, I think these are called isochores. Isochore or isochore. Basically, they remind me of paper beads. Again, it's something that you draw the little round part at the top. Then you make a semicircle, not quite a semicircle, around and around, and then the black at the bottom colored in, and then just little lines. What makes this is the shading because it makes it look like these are round, that they're um, the middle is sticking up and the back part is down. I love these. Um, this one, Bugle. Bugle's not hard. Uh, I think this is the second or third time I've done Bugle. Not one of my favorites, but the variation they show on Pinterest, they are very cool. So this is the, I think this one is the basic. And then the variations of this one are wonderful. I didn't want to take all that time. Love these. I love making the circles and coloring them in to make them look like you know those uh, twisted candies on a stick, those suckers? That's what they remind me of. I love this one. This one was new to me, and I want to show you what I think of this one. See the half? What is that place in Australia called that has the, it's a concert place? The clamshell something? I don't know. But that's what this reminds me of, is that concert place in Australia. Love this one. It Once I got the hang of it, it was easy to make. Took me two tries on this one. This one I've been doing for a long time. Love this. 
been doing this one for a couple years. I like this one. And if you don't put the little curly cues at the, the end and you don't do the striping here, this could be the basis for an eyeball. I made eyeballs out of these and I don't draw human features, but that was really cool. I made an eyeball, a blue eyeball and a green eyeball in one of these. That was fun. Surprised me at how much I liked it. Backside. Let's do this one. This is one of my favorite ones. This is Yen Cut. Again, divided up into half inch squares each direction. And then you just draw a line down the middle and you keep going with your line and making it bow on both sides. Very simple to make, not hard. This one right here, frames, was a little more difficult because you had to make sure that when you did it, that the pieces looked like they were actually connected. But cutting it on a diagonal kind of messes it up a little bit. Shading is really important on this one because you want certain sets of blocks to stick up and certain sets of blocks to look at like they're lower level, like they're sunken in. All right, the next one's called Moon Zen. This one was tough. I did this one four times. Um, as I said before, it took me four tries to get this one. This one, I don't know why, but I struggled with this one. Um, if you don't get the original marks here in the center section correct, then you cannot set up this one, the outside ones, to look good. And one section feeds off the other. And if you mess up this section, then this section doesn't look right. So it took me about four tries and I did it on two cards on both sides and picked out the best one of the bunch because this one made me a little bit crazy. And I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why, but this one made me a little bit nuts. This is called Jetties. All they are are little balls with stripes and squiggle marks in the middle with a lot of shading. Again, not rocket science, not hard to do. Just takes a little bit of time because there's a lot of little fussy balls in there. Inside the empty space of the balls, there's just little tiny circles. I, I think a lot of people call those bubbles. You just draw those little tiny circles in there and that's it. This one, not one of my favorites. I, for some reason, I don't really, this one's not one of my favorites. Um, this one would be good for filler inside if you did um, some kind of background with flowers. This would be a good filler. Put some leaves on it and you could call it a flower. Not, you know, I don't like this one as much as I like some of the others. This one was new to me. This one's called Telus. And I like this one, but by cutting it on a diagonal, it kind of destroyed the concept of it. Um... But I like this one. I thought this one was, was very kind of plain, but it was nice. And I think there were variations on Pinterest of this one that were much nicer than what I have here. This one is called Betweed, and I've made this one a million times. You can make it into squares, circles. You could do it a diamond shape, whatever. This one is very versatile pattern. Uh, let's see. This one called Log Jam. First time I ever did this one. I liked it. But I had to do it a couple times. When you do the setup row on Pinterest, it shows you the setup row. But then you just, you, you have to figure out how to do the setup row for the next group. And if you mess that up, there's really not a way to fix it. I had to start over. I think I did this one either two or three times before it finally dawned on me how to do the rest of it. So you really need to pay attention to this one. And again, the shading makes all the difference in the world in these things. This one's called, I think this is called Maelstrom. Maelstrom. This one was fun. Super duper easy. Oh, sorry. Um, the only thing I struggled with, with on this one is I wanted the this part right here to go down the middle. And I tried to figure out how to do it. And obviously I did not succeed. But nevertheless, it I got a nice set of four right here and I like this pattern. I think it's very cool and if you look at it really close and some of the other stuff I've done if you don't put these little things in the corner these are the bases for flowers that I made in the vinyl that I did for Shannon Green. 
Super duper simple. This one is an optical illusion to make it look like the ribbons are, you know, on top of each other. Shading is what gives it the depth. Drawing these little things right here, you have to figure out exactly where to put the lines to make everything look like it's snaking through. This one just took a little bit of time. It wasn't horrible, but it did challenge my brain a little bit. This one has been around a long time, and I cannot remember what the name of it is. But all it is is just drawing wonky lines with uh, going up and down to make it look like this is up, this is down, this is up, this is down. Cutting it on the diagonal again does not give it the justice that it deserves, but it's a nice pattern. This one was new to me, and I really like this one. This one has different variations. Again, I found it on Pinterest, and I like this one because it's got tons of variations, and I really like this one. I think it's Nivelope. It's almost like the word envelope, except for it has the N in front of it, but I really like it. And all it is is doing half-inch squares across the piece right here, and then doing part of a pattern in each one of the four squares that ends up making the circle. Very cool. Um, let's see, I don't think I talked about this one right here. Oh, this one's called Viaduct. And all it is is just a bunch of semicircles and then another semicircle and then another one that looks like an eyeball, kind of like the iris and the eye on a cartoon character. Looking, if you look at it, doesn't it look like a two, two eyes go looking at it? this way. So that's what the whole thing is. That's all it is. Uh, shading is important for this one. So I think that's, yeah, that's all of them. There are, let me back you out. There are 30 of these on the squash book. And then number 31 was this one, which I was, I have never done before. It was brand new to me. Let me Bring in so you can see it a little bit better, what it looks like. There you go. And like I said before, this is the one where I cut out. The top one on it is where I cut it out. It showed a variation where you extended them out like a pinwheel. I tried it, and I was not happy with it. But I hated to waste all that time that I put into it. So I thought, ah, poo, it'll be good for the back of the book. But there's the front. So this is two of the same one, just one with a little more shading on top of the other. The, the two rows here, the inside and the outside, or the, or the th one, two, the second row, are all part of that one. And then the bottom one is one that I made that I didn't really like the inside portion of it, but the outside looked okay, so I fussy cut that off and then just glued this other one on top of it. I thought it was okay, not bad. There's tons of things you can do with doodling. You don't just have to doodle, <coughs> excuse me, doodle on a piece of paper and call it a day. You can cut stuff out, give it depth, do shading, you can paint it. There's a million things you can do with your doodles. And no, not everyone is an expert, but you don't become an expert overnight. You got to take some time to hone your craft. I'm still working on it, but I'm having a great time. So that's all my uh, doodle a day in March. I appreciate everyone. Excuse me. <coughs> I appreciate everyone watching. Please go out and try. Get yourself a ballpoint pen and a little pad of paper and just do your thing. And no, yours will not look like mine. And mine don't look like yours. But it's okay. I think I started out by doodling saying Vicky loves XYZ boy. <laughs> In school. I think that's how all this started. So... You know, it, it doesn't have to be beautiful in the beginning. It has to be whatever pleases your eye. And I am a line person. I like all the little lines and all the little details like that. I And like I said, I'm not very good at putting the images together and melding them into one thing together. But I'm getting there. You know, it just takes a little bit of time to figure out how to put, like, something else around this in a picture and just takes time. So that's it. I'm not going to go through the blow by blow, you know, other video. There's no point in me going through five hours of video, four or five hours of video to whittle it down to 20 minutes. So this is it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Maybe next year I'll do a uh, doodle a day in the month of March again, and I will come up with an, a different idea. Um, 
it's been a lot of fun. Oh, wait, one more thing. And also during the month of March, I made the block that has the doodles on it. Ones that some were new to me, some weren't. My block, my block's a little wonky, but it was fun. So there's a million things you can do with doodles. Don't just limit yourself to putting them in a book or doing this. Put them on other things so that you can see them. Put them on things that you enjoy. Paint a vinyl custom keeper and put all your doodles on there like I did mine. I mean, there's a million things you can do with your artwork. As much as I, I enjoy my artwork, my stuff isn't like a lot of my friends' stuff. They're more the cut and paste and painting and that kind of stuff. I'm not very good at that stuff. This I, I really enjoy this. So, you know, you find your thing. Find your, your, I don't know, they call it niche or niche. Find what makes you happy and do it. Seriously. This made me happy. <laughs> All right. So thanks for watching the Doodle Day in March. Go out and doodle something. Bye.